there are currently two uh, registered herbicides for controlling giant rat style grass. Uh, one of them is flupropanate, also known as uh, Task Force or Tussock or a couple of others, and the other is glyphosate, commonly known as Roundup. Flupropanate is a, a slow-acting root uptake herbicide. Um, it's selective when applied at the correct rates uh, and will generally take out uh, giant rat's tail grass and leave most other grasses alone. It's rain activated, so the herbicide or flupropanate has to get to the soil and it's taken up by the roots. It's also a residual herbicide that can control seedlings of giant rat's tail grass for a number of months uh, after application. Um, the residual activity tends to last longer on uh, black clay type soils over um, sandy coastal soils uh, where it tends to uh, run out quicker, uh, mainly due to the soil type. So you just need to be careful when you apply it on these sandy soils. We found that you generally get one season, you know, um, one growing season, and then moving into the next growing season, you'll tend to start seeing new giant rat's tail grass seedlings. Well, that depends on your situation. Uh, granular flupropanate was designed to be applied over trees so it falls through the tree canopy and hits the ground rather than if you were to do that with a liquid, you'd apply that onto the tree's leaves and it'd be stuck there and not get to the target that you wanted to kill. Um, and in this case, that's giant rat's tail grass. Um, it really depends on uh, your situation, uh, your preference, um, cost, will also play a part in choosing uh, which, either liquid or granular. Um, if you've certainly got a lot of trees, it may well be uh, better to go granular. If your landscape is quite open and you can use ground-based machinery, that might be the better option. I tend, don't really have a recommendation of either way. It's really up to the landholder what they decide and what they decide is the best for their situation. So the label rate for giant rat's tail grass control is um, two litres per hectare for um, broad acre spraying. We would recommend that would, should be your standard rate for most situations. However, what we found on some of the lighter coastal soils is you can wind that back a little bit to as low as 1.5 litres per hectare. And the reason for that is um, the herbicide appears to be more readily available to plants in these sandy soils. And so um, if we're spraying at two litres a hectare, we can tend to kill a lot more species that we don't want to kill. So um, we wind that rate back to 1.5 to 1.7. It also allows us, if we happen to overlap our spray uh, paths a little bit, it gives us some leeway in terms of not applying too much and not damaging too many other plant species that we want to keep. The surfactant, for if you're spraying a liquid uh, out of a, say, a boom spray or even um, out of a handgun, no surfactant is needed because you don't want the flupropanate sticking to the plant. You want it to get to the soil as soon as the rain washes it off uh, because it's a soil and a root uptake herbicide. So you don't need to have a surfactant. Maybe for aerial spraying, you may need to add a spraying oil, and that's more around stopping droplets evaporating f when they're getting from the aircraft to the ground. Um, and that's really, really um, how it works. Recommend the, that landholders do some test strips first uh, on their particular soil type um, and try those rates out between 1.5 and 2 litres to the hectare and see how they go before they just sort of jump in and do the whole paddock. You can apply flupropanate at any time of year. One of the things with flupropanate is you, the, the giant rastile grass plants don't need to be green and actively growing uh, simply because the green leaf doesn't take up much of the herbicide. It's got to get to the ground and be taken up by the roots. So... When you spray it on the plant, um, it just crystallises on the leaf and then um, 
the rain just washes it into the soil. What we found through our research is that the best time to apply it is probably late in, in spring going into your main rain season. And the reason for that is those early rainfalls tend to be a bit lighter, so you can get that herbicide into the soil before you get your heavy rain and it gets into the plant because, you know, 15 to 20 mil is enough to activate it. And so that plant will take it up and it'll be in the plant uh, ready to start working. What happens also at that time of year when you apply it is you can basically uh, stop the plant setting seed in the growing season because the herbicide's in the plant already. The later you apply it in the growing season, the more seed you're going to get produced through that growing season. And uh, when we're wanting to limit seed production, it's better to apply it early. All that seed that is produced uh, while flupropanate is acting is still highly viable. Flupropanate has no impact on the seed on the plant or the seed that's produced while it's, while it's working. Given that flupropanate acts on germinating seeds, you need to wait um, till you get about 25 to 50 mil of rainfall and that just pushes the fluoropropanate into the soil uh, just below that where your seeds are going to germinate. So 25 to 50 mil of rain and then you should be able to sow other pasture seeds into that uh, landscape and have little, if, uh, little to no damage. Some pastures are more susceptible uh, to fluoropropanate um, while they're establishing. So signal grass and roads grass seem to be quite tolerant. Um, some of our native species are probably less tolerant during that establishment phase. Um, so, you know, it's good to choose the species that are quite tolerant after you apply flupropanate to ensure you get that pasture established. So spot spraying is uh, where you have a directed spray onto individual plants and you're not covering the whole uh, landscape or non-target species. And where you are using spot spraying or a spot sprayed area, the withholding period for grazing animals, both for milk and meat production, is 14 days. Uh, following that 14 day period, if you graze spot spray areas, before you can, uh, those animals can be slaughtered or you can use that milk for human consumption, the animals have to be on clean feed for a 14 day period and then the products are fine to be used for human consumption. So for other spraying, which we would say is boom spraying or any other spraying that's not a directed spray onto individual plants or small clumps of plants, the same restriction applies in terms of you're not to graze for four months. So if I boom spray a paddock, there's a four month withholding period where I cannot graze that. Um, following uh, that four months, when I put livestock on there, if they're going to, uh, or their produce is going to be used for human consumption, they have to come off that area and be on uh, clean feed for a 14 day period. So once they've done that, they're right to be, uh, you know, to be slaughtered or the milk's right to be used for human consumption. So that just gets the flupropanate out of their body and uh, we're all good to go. And the requirement is important because that's a perpetual requirement. Once you've applied it, there is no end date. Uh, what it means is so um, if I've put them on that paddock and they've been grazed after I've treated it, and then I take them off and put them on clean feed and send them to slaughter, that's fine. But if I have another group of animals, say six months later, I bring it into on, onto that treated area, that 14 day period on clean feed still applies afterwards if they're going to slaughter. If they're being shifted down the road to be fattened somewhere, it doesn't really matter. It's only when they are going to be slaughtered or go in the, get into the human supply chain. Once you've applied your flupropanate onto your grass, um, and while it's sitting on the, on the plant foliage, um, and you get a fire, uh, it will disappear into the smoke and will be lost uh, and won't be available. So you would have wasted your money 
uh, or and your effort in applying that herbicide. Now that's particularly for a liquid herbicide, but we've also found that granular herbicide applied and you get a fire before any rainfall, there can be a negative impact on its efficacy as well. And it will simply be around the heat of the fire, um, either denaturing the flupropanate compounds or um, just causing them to the heat to destroy the compound or volatilise it up into the smoke. So there's an impact on both liquid and granular if you apply them and uh, a fire comes through before you get any rainfall to put them into the soil. Once you get rainfall into the soil, and again, you only need 15 to 20 mil to do that, particularly for liquid, uh, um, flupropanate, um, a fire can come through and uh, the herbicide is safe. So it's in the soil and the fire then will have little to no impact on, on the efficacy of flupropanate. For granular, you may, um, because it's a granule, it will require a little bit more rain to get that herbicide uh, into the soil. The granular product is can be a bit more slow acting, so you might need several rains to really make it safe. But, um, but so you need that rainfall after you apply, and once it gets into the soil, it's pretty much safe. The other question that's really been asked a lot is around what is the effect of ash following a fire? So if I was to apply the flupropanate into ash following a grass fire, uh, will that impact flupropanate efficacy? Now our research has shown that there is little or no impact on efficacy. That carbon in the ash does not tend to bind up the flupropanate based on field results. Um, and in fact, where we did burn giant rat's tail grass and then apply the flupropanate straight into the ash, that's where it actually had the best results. And that's quite counter to what the general comment is uh, amongst landholders and others. Well, glyphosate is a knockdown herbicide. Um, it's a systemic herbicide that moves through the plant. It needs to be applied to green leaf to be active. Um, if you apply it to brown or dead material, you've just wasted your time and money and energy. It's also not selective, um, so it'll kill a whole range of different things. So it'll kill your GRT, it'll kill the grass you want to keep, it'll kill your legume next door. So you've just got to be very careful when you apply it that you only apply it to the thing you want to kill. Glyphosate, there's no residual activity. Um, once it's applied, it kills what it kills, and it's all over. You can mix uh, glyphosate and flupropanate. Um, they can be a little bit antagonistic. The idea is uh, mainly around spot spraying. So if you mix the two and spraying it on green plants, you can get the, the glyphosate to kill the green plant or act as a marker. Um, and then the flupropanate is generally used as the residual content to um, mop up any seedlings around those plants as they germinate and, and emerge. Um, what we would say also is that you don't mix up more than, can, than you can use in a day. So lots of chemicals or herbicides, uh, the longer they're in the same mix together, the more chance they are to um, be antagonistic and, and counteract each other's impact. So um, just mix up as much as you can use for the, the period you're spraying, generally a day, and then mix up a new batch the next day. So the idea in using glyphosate is that it's going to act more quickly on the plant and just stop that seed production. Even if it's applied as a, at a low rate, um, it'll stop that seed production and allow the flupropanate then to kill the plant. So um, that's why uh, for spot spraying, people do mix it together. So flupropanate has no uh, effect on seed viability um, when it's sprayed onto the plant or if seed are produced while the flupropanate is, is killing the giant rastal grass plants. So um, 
it's one of the, I suppose, the downsides is if you spray it on plants that are actively growing, they'll still produce seed until the flupropanate is active. And that seed is 90% plus viable and it will stay that way. Um, it'll still kill the plant. It just means you've got a crop of seed to deal with later on and going into the future. Glyphosate can, it'll, it'll halt or stop seed production more quickly because uh, it'll desiccate the plant a bit quicker. Um, if you apply glyphosate on very immature seed heads, yes, it will stop those seed being produced. Um, but you've got a spray window of about two weeks from flowering. And after that two weeks, the longer you go after that two weeks, the more seed is going to be viable even if you spray uh, glyphosate on plants. So it, the short answer is no. Most herbicides don't have any impact on seed viability um, when they're sprayed on mature seed on plants or while um, the herbicide's killing the plant. Uh, there's no real impact on seed viability. So the residual herbicides only kill seeds or plants when the seed germinates. So it's in the soil, the seed starts to grow, sticks out of root, gets some of the herbicide, it kills it. But the seed can sit in, herb in soil with that herbicide in it. If it stays there and doesn't germinate and that, that residual herbicide degrades over time, it'll get to a, a low enough level that when that seed pops out of its dormancy or whatever and decides to germinate, it'll be fine because the herbicide's degraded. So when with giant rastal grass, when you have sort of an eight to 10 year seed life, so if you look at a graph, the seed, so if this is 100% of the seed in the soil, it sort of degrades over time down to zero. And this is 10 years out here. So at any point along there, you know, I apply herbicide at the start. I've got one, maybe two years residual activity. So any seed that's still in the soil after then is right to germinate when it gets the right conditions. So I guess the, the, the sort of take home message is that managing giant rat's tail or the process of managing it, it's not a one size fits all situation. There's a lot of nuance uh, in managing it, a lot of subtle differences between different paddocks, different soil types, different land uses, and, and different business models. Um, it impacts all of those. And when deciding on how to progress a management program, uh, the landholders need to get some good specialist advice about what is the best process. I would also suggest that even once they've got that and they embark on a process, they take a couple of years to learn how to use it and learn how, and that's by treating small areas, managing small areas and understanding how the management process will work um, before you spend lots of money and do large areas. Um, it's good to just take that time to learn because if you do you know, large areas and it comes unstuck, well, that's a lot of money that's just thrown away. So take the time and, and do a little bit of practice before you jump out in, and do large areas of uh, GRT control. <laughs>